I'm um, an engineer that turns out to like uh, social neuroscience and now I am studying complex systems in FAU in the Human Brain and Behavior Laboratory but uh, from my engineering school uh, I remember something important that uh, all models are false but some are important and can be useful and today I will speak about one model and metaphor which is the networks and starting with the brain how this metaphor of the network can be useful and could make a change from the traditional metaphor of the brain seen as a computer that is caused by the legacy of, of course, the invention of the computer by Turing. Uh, when cognitive science was created uh, in the 50s, it was the most advanced technological uh, artifacts of humans, so it was normal to compare the brain to the computer, as in the previous Freud compared it to the steam engine or Descartes to a mechanical machine. But uh, in my PhD, I followed the path of two scientists uh, called um, Umberto Maturana and Francisco Varela, two Chilean guys, who were like, well, maybe we can see this in a different manner. And before starting to the brain, thinking about the brain, they think about biology and what makes life uh, so specific and so weird. And the two concepts at the core of their theory called autopoiesis, which means self-reproduction, is the capacity of a cell to maintain itself physically and to be autonomous while being coupled with the environment and interacting with the environment. But the power of this metaphor is that cells can interact with the environment, but they also can interact between each other. And when you have many, many cells, you end up with a multicellular organism that itself can have a nervous system. And here you see a, a picture from the brain web, a very famous paper from Francisco Varela, where he compared for the first time the brain to a peer-to-peer -peer network, at that time it was Napster. And uh, you have here uh, two different brain regions, and it's not like in the computer where uh, regions light up, but more about different regions that collaborate and interact between each other. And so once you have this uh, physical autonomy and at the meantime this cognitive autonomy with the nervous system, you can iterate the metaphor and have social interaction. That was the main goal of my PhD, to demonstrate how uh, such interaction at the social level can be retranscribed by the emergence of synchronization and coordination between the brain activity of two people. And when I was demonstrating uh, experimentally, but later on uh, with numerical simulation, I re realized something very funny. The same software I used for plotting the networks of the brain regions was the same I used for plotting the uh, network of my Facebook friends. And so I realized that uh, actually the brain can be seen as a network, but it's also part of a social network. And when you iterate that, you end up at the global level with what Marshall Macklin, the Canadian philosopher, called the global village. Basically, uh, an organism at the level of uh, the whole planet. And the uh, French sociologist Emile Durkheim uh, coined this term way before as collective consciousness, where a group of people share the same feelings and the same uh, belief or uh, motive and can have a creation together and have a motto together. And so that brings us to society and uh, I will start by the fact that this uh, metaphor of network can be useful for understanding but also for maybe solving some issue and one of the biggest issues we faced in the recent years was the financial crisis. And in 2011 a group of uh, Switzerland um, plot the network of all the uh, financial corporation and they end up with a very specific structure with a, a core which contains certain companies uh, you may recognize love uh, which are densely connected and have a highly influential control over the whole network and when I saw that I see, saw that as an epileptic focus in the brain and seeing the financial crisis as an epileptic seizure so what is the main problem here? It's uh, mainly that we have a structure that is biased 
And uh, to sum up uh, network theory and graph theory in two slides, which is the game of TED, uh, I would say that a uh, network can be seen in different manner, but you can see, for instance, a regular network, like on the left, and random network on the right. When you have regular, you have local structure that facilitates interaction at the local level, but uh, make difficult the transmission and the mobility of information across the network. At contrary, on the random network, you can transmit information fairly easily across the network, but you have no local structure. And most of the network in nature are in the middle. And as we see with the financial structure, uh, we have also another way of seeing in the structure with control and resilience. When you have a tree, which is a highly structured network, you have a good control over the system, but you, have, you are really not robust to um, uh, destabilization. Like for instance, if I get rid of this node, everything collapses. And contrary, on the mesh uh, structure, uh, which is at the base of ARPANET and which become later on internet, uh, it's highly uh, reliable to failure. If I get rid of one node, the network is still uh, good. So, in the same way, there are in the middle, uh, most are the network in sociology or in nature, in the in the between of these two extrema, but uh, our system uh, hide a lot of trees. And beyond the appearance of diversity, for instance, here in the food market of brands, uh, there are very few big companies that own this brand, and the, the structure behind is a tree. And that lasts also for media, where in the Tokyo last year in the US, the number of companies dropped from 50 to 6. With an apparent diversity, uh, the network of media companies becoming more and more like a tree. And that's last uh, also for uh, internet, where with the cloud, we have the idea that our data are distributed and so on, but actually, the cloud is very highly centralized, and it, it causes many issues regarding safety and about privacy and governance of information. So my last part will look about how to solve that, or maybe how to rebalance this uh, highly uh, tree-like structure. And uh, I would uh, um, speak about openness and how to increase connectivity in society, so as uh, Dr. Lanning spoke. And for instance, the most uh, common example is Wikipedia, which connect people uh, in a distributed manner towards making knowledge, but there are many other examples, such as for Creative Commons, connecting people and creator, instead of using copyright, co uh, Creative Commons is based on sharing, mixing, and uh, rewriting, and so it's enhancing innovation instead of uh, slowing down it. That's work also with software and development. So with creation of software, the open source movement has brought many interesting projects such as Linux, Apache, or Firefox that are able to outsmart classical models of companies. And it can be seen also in uh, other projects like, for instance, OpenOffice or Giphy, which allow to plot networks or brainstorm for analyzing brain activity. So there are many projects that are brought by com communities. And uh, foreseeing that uh, in the matter of science, this also can be brought by uh, open access movement, which try to bring uh, knowledge as a common and to enhance collaboration between scientists and uh, fight against dogmas and uh, uh, schools of thoughts. And by opening data and opening access, it can highly uh, facilitate collaboration between scientists. So we have created a community called IcoPhD that I invite you to visit to discuss about this. But there are many other examples. In Iceland, for instance, they use uh, Facebook and Twitter to rewrite their own constitution. It's about connecting people and ideas. And uh, there are many, many uh, events, like for instance, Mesh next week in San Francisco, uh, the community we share that try to connect people in a collaborative economy. Uh, all these people connect and actually propose new models. New models based on uh, this autonomy that we saw with the cells, uh, resilience of the models, and social justice that we are lacking kind of nowadays. And so, uh, for instance, to ex for, as an example of uh, new models, because it's not just uh, idealistic dreams, 
you can have an idea now with Kickstarter or other crowdfunding systems actually found your projects. And so my answer to tomorrow, where tomorrow begins would be now if you want to and I thank you for your attention.